G'day, it's Donna from Australia and we're going to be making this beautiful bridal journal. This is, believe it or not, a beginner friendly. But if you're experienced, you're going to love it too because it's packed with new ideas and I've also added a couple of freebies. Here is what I'll be showing you how to do in this journal. We will be gathering the pages using an easy method of tying them into the cover with a piece of ribbon, making a heart pocket, making this beautiful heart that can be used as a pocket or a topper for your cover, making this lace label and sample lace pieces, embellishing the cover and honestly there's more than 10 ideas for bridal pages. I just lost count. We're going to start by making the cover. Because I've already made this cover, I didn't need to repeat it in this video. I want you to watch this video here and make your cover, then come back to this video to turn it into a beautiful bridal journal. First steps, we're going to be preparing the pages. So hang on to your hat because there are lots of them. If you're not using a pattern envelope, just use whatever cover you've got. But I'm using this pattern envelope for my cover. Because it's a pattern envelope, I'm also going to be using the instruction papers that come with the pattern. And I'm going to turn these into some pages. Sometimes you might open these packets up and this paper can be a little bit fragile. Or you might not like so much what's on one side of the page but love the other side of the page. What I do to fix this is I just cut out a single piece like this then I glue it right on top of the page I don't like. With the wrong side facing up and I just use this spray glue. This spray glue is tacky to the touch. You put it on both sides that you're going to join together to make it permanent and then I just lay down corner to corner of my page and it works a treat and doing it this way is great because I can see the actual bridal gown that was this pattern. Now because my bridal cover has a very pale pretty blue in it I'm going to be using the pages out of this old index book. It's perfect because the papers are a very pale blue. And because I want my bride to be able to journal and add her own things into this journal, these pages are a must if you're giving a journal to a bride. And to make them look even more beautiful, if you've got a, a punch edge, use this all the way down one side. And I recommend that you do this before you sew your pages in, it's much easier. If you want to know how to coffee dye lace papers like these, I've put that video in the description box below. So all you've got to do with these pages is if you've got A4, you just fold them in half and trim them to fit inside your cover. For these pages, I'm using dictionary pages. This big one is a Pictionary and this smaller one is the Webster's Dictionary and I've selected the page with wedding on it. Now the bigger one here, I didn't have anything to do with a bridal wedding, so I just used something that I thought would look okay with everything else. And I'll show you what I do to this small dictionary page when we get to the flip through at the end of the video. These pages here couldn't be easier. Because my mum was in her 80s, she had lots of these lovely old notepads. All I had to do was go through them, pull out a page here and there and fold them in half. And they're smaller than the A4 sizes, but having different size pages through your journal looks fantastic. This one here is a beautiful old writing pad. It's got a watermark on it, so when you lift the page up, very slowly you'll see the watermark. When you lay it back down, it disappears. So if you've got some beautiful old paper in your stash, they're perfect 
when you're making a special journal like this. And you can also punch the edge with your lace punch to make it look even better. I've gathered 12 pages that needed very little work. So now I've got some base pages together. I'm going to go through and sort them out a little bit. This is another one of those pages that I use that spray glue method where I put a page that I'd rather see on top of another ugly page. I've selected this page for my centerfold and I've folded it up at the bottom so it's going to be a pocket on the left and right side. But what I do here is I don't glue the pocket down until I've actually bound all the pages in the journal and that way it will lay much flatter. This page is also using a bridal pattern envelope. So what I do to this one is I'm going to use it as a page, not a cover. So I just cut the top off and I use this edge on a page later on. I actually turn it into a pocket. So to open this envelope up so I can use it as a page, I just cut a slither off the side and off the bottom. And now it's going to open up to a page with the left and right side. So I'm going to go through the journal and see where it might fit best before I cut any more off it. So I just fold this part over because it's already got a line marked on it. So I just use that, fold it over and now it's a flip page. See the little beetle on the right hand side here? We're going to take care of that. So I cover that over. It's a paper lace strip. I found it in my mum's stash and some of it had some glue on the back. So I just recycled it and it's perfect to cover over this beetle. And this is just rub-ons. For the back side of this envelope, I'm going to turn it into a flip page. So first off, I make a hinge and I make it as tall as what I want to add on it. So I just glue it to the back side of the page and I glue an advertisement that was in one of the envelopes as the flip. My mum had a huge stash of gift wrapping paper and I was lucky enough to find this piece which matched perfectly and I'll show you how to make this heart pocket to put in the corner a little bit further on in the video. This is an A4 designer paper. You know how you get your 12 by 12s? Only these pieces are A4. Mum had a huge collection of these designer papers, so I was over the moon when I found this beautiful piece here. I also used this Valentine's Day stamp printable. It's printed on its side, so I just folded it in half and I moved it up to the top of my pages. When I was 16, I worked for a newspaper office and I learnt to do bookbinding there. And they also sold envelopes and gift cards. So I ended up with a box of these fabulous old wedding cards. This one's embossed, so I was able to use the front and the back as a page because it was a very wide card and not too heavy paper. And this one already had this scallop cut on the side. So I just cut the front of the card off and glued it on the edge of my page and I use it for a tuck spot. This pocket here, I'll show you how to make this in the pocket idea video. I left the flap open and glued it to my page and I found this little heart embellishment in my mum's stash. It was already fussy cut and ready to glue on the front. Now I'm going to show you how to do this easy ribbon binding to tie in the pages. Then after I've done that, I'll show you some more page ideas that are best done after the pages have been put in the cover. I'm going to start by showing you how to prepare the pages in this journal, but then I'm going to swap over to a new video because this one didn't record while I was actually doing it. So I start off by using my ruler and pushing all my pages right into the spine of the cover. Then I clamp on the right side and the left side. Now this is optional. 
you don't have to do this but if you feel that it holds everything in place for you and it feels better just use a peg or something like that to hold them we're going to be putting four holes right down the center of the spine and punch holes right through all of the pages and the cover at the same time my journal has 21 pages in total so when they're folded in half I've got 42 pages so now I'm going to swap over to my demo of punching the holes and then threading the lace through and tying a knot you're going to need a pokey tool and a ruler and a large eye needle I'm using a ribbon in my wedding journal but for this demo I'm just using seam binding so just start off by getting your pages and putting them inside the cover make sure they're even top and bottom and the pages are pushed right in tight to the cover in the spine area and put your pegs on just to hold the pages into the cover while you're poking the holes and I measure down an inch and push my first hole through all the pages and the cover then I come up an inch from the bottom and push the pokey tool through again I want fairly big holes because I'm using ribbon so push it right through to the widest part then I'm going to measure down an inch and a quarter from the top hole and push my pokey tool through again and an inch and a quarter up from the bottom hole so you'll end up with four holes in total now thread your ribbon into your needle I cut it on an angle so it's much easier to pull through you only need a short bit these are only scraps so if you want your bow or your knot on the outside start by putting your needle on the outside of the spine now if your needle's a bit hard to get through because you've got ribbon in it just use a pair of pliers grab it where the eye is and just give it a pull then put your needle back through from the inside to the outside so this is how you do it if you want your bow on the outside and you get a flat piece on the inside I'm going to pull this out because for the wedding journal I put my flat piece on the outside and tie the knot on the inside so this time you put your needle through the pages from the inside of the journal and then go to your second hole on the outside and push it back through to the the middle of your journal use your pliers if you need to now I've got a long stitch on the outside and my two tails on the inside I just pull it up to make it even and tie a knot you can tie the knot at the top or pull it down to the middle or the bottom so I've got one knot there I tighten it up I just put a second knot in it just in case you've got a slippery ribbon but this seam binding doesn't go anywhere so I do the same again on the bottom so this is even though you're using a needle it's technically a no sew binding we're just putting the piece of ribbon through the holes and tying a knot now give it a crease and admire your work I think this is a pretty easy way to sew in your pages and this is what it looks like on the wedding journal now I'm going to trim my ribbon length so I've just got enough ribbon hanging down the bottom of the pages that's going to peek out when the journal's closed and now I'm going to glue the edges of these pockets down and that's what I was talking about earlier in the video these pockets are going to lay a lot flatter now I was going to show you this page later but I might as well show it to you now to finish off the pocket I glued down a piece of fabric tape measure you don't want anything too stiff unless your paper is a bit stronger so a light tape measure is best on light paper so I've just glued it across the top and that has made these pockets look amazing now this one here is a hanky holder I've used a background piece of paper that my mum made up and I've just glued down one side and across the bottom a piece of printed vellum and I've got this very light handkerchief that I picked up from the charity shop 
still folded as I got it and I just slipped that in this little pocket here. This is just a nice surprise for the bride when she gets to the center of her journal. Now right now I'm gonna start work on the cover, but I want you to know that when I'm working on a journal, I swap between the pages and the cover as I find things and think that that's gonna look good somewhere, I'll grab it and glue it in place before I forget how I want it to look. So I'm just putting some Helma fabric glue on the back of this lace. So like I always do, when I glue this down on my cover, I don't press too firmly with my fingers because I don't want the glue coming through the lace and ruining the look. If you've got a Teflon coated bone folder that's got a flat edge, use that once the glue starts taking hold. Now we've got to cover up this barcode. Now the piece of lace that I had on the front here, I'd pre-cut it so that it fit onto the front of my journal. And I then cut this little flower out and it fits perfect over the top of the barcode. It does look a bit darker than the rest of the cover, but in all honesty, the cover up worked. I'm just experimenting. I'm tying a piece of this coffee dyed trim around the cover just to see whether I want to have it all white or I want to get brave and add a bit of colour that works in with the bottom of the cover. I definitely know I want to use this heart shaped bridal piece that my mum made. The only thing is because it's so old the glue on the front of it has yellowed so I just go ahead and glue down these breads but I break the teeth off the bread so I can just glue them straight down onto the front of the heart and it worked perfectly. If you haven't seen these bridal charms before the wedding horseshoe is a traditional bridal charm that's been used in weddings for centuries so the horseshoe is a symbol of good luck for the bride. My mum used to make them, but she made them in these little hearts as well. I'm one of four daughters. She made these bridal charms for all of us. Now, I'm not brave enough to glue it down just yet, so I waste a bit of time by tying a bow on the spine. This is a, it's not a ribbon, it's a net. And on one side of it, it's got a very fine layer of glue. So it's somehow used in sewing as a reinforcement, maybe for bridal seams or something like that. So I just push it under the ribbon binding and tie it into a beautiful bow. Now I'm ready to glue the heart onto the front of the cover and I'm gonna keep the wrist tie intact. So I put a thin bead of glue around the center of the heart and this way I'll be able to tuck things under it if I decide to add something else to the cover, which I will be. So I just press that down. This Helmer fabric glue, it works really well so I don't have to go overboard. Now I put a little bit of glue on the front just behind the ribbon here. <laughs> Whatever you do, do not press this with your fingers if you're using glue and satin ribbon. It'll just come straight through. So be very gentle there. Let it take hold before you press it with your fingers. Now I'm going to bring this over to the inside of the cover and I'm going to glue it down so that it falls right in line with this embellished heart. I'll be showing you how to make this heart tuck spot in a minute. So I just cut it off and tuck these tails behind the heart. So I'm just seeing that I've still got enough room to use the pocket. So that's done. I'm just going to let this dry before I move on to the next step. I can't make up my mind how to finish the cover. I've got these beautiful pieces here to put on it but I can't decide which way I want to go. So I'm going to move on with embellishing the pages and adding this beautiful little heart tuck spot. And then I'm going to come back to the cover later on. 
Now I'm going to show you how to make this layered heart topper. You can use this as a topper or a corner side tuck. I made one with flowers on the front and one with a bow because I wasn't sure which one I'd rather use. So you can make one of these two. I've made a template for you. All you got to do is go to my website, the link's below in the description box, register for my website, download the printable, cut it out and follow my steps. All the pieces are labelled A, B, C. There's four main papers to this heart. Uh, this shiny metallic sort of mirror cardstock and this beautiful bridal shimmery cardstock and another piece of bridal vellum. If you don't want to make this heart as a bridal heart, just use any papers you've got. For the background image, I used a piece of this gift wrapping paper. The first piece we're going to cut out is a on the mirrored sheet. It's easier to trace around the heart on the back side of this type of paper. So just pick it up and put your pattern piece in reverse and just trace around it with a pencil. Now this will work because by the time you cut this out and turn it over, it's facing the right way. So the lower part of the heart top is on your right hand side. Now we're going to do the second layer, which is pattern piece B. I find it easier to cut out the center of the heart first. So you've got to cut that out and put it aside. Then cut around the outside so you're left with a heart shape frame. So this is piece B. Now I'm going to trace this piece onto this sheen type of cardstock. It's a silver sheen. Once you've traced it out, you've got to cut it out and it sits right on top of your silver mirror piece. And there's meant to be a gap between the background heart and the frame. Now for piece C, this is your image. You can use a photograph of the bride and groom if you've got one and you know who they are. Or like I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this gift wrapping paper for my background so it's pretty generic. Here's a tip so you can know exactly what your image is going to look like. Use your frame pattern to trace around the inside of the heart so you know exactly where to put your pattern piece C. Then trace more of a firm heavy line around that just make sure when you cut it out, you cut it out on the inside line. The outside line was only a holding place. So you cut it away. Now bring back your first two pieces and do a test fit. And the layers should look like this. So now you know it's going to work. Put some glue on the back of your frame and glue it down onto the mirror piece. Then put some glue on the back of your photograph or your image and glue that down. Now you can see the gaps in between each layer. This is what it's supposed to look like. So make sure you get them nice and even. So now instead of seeing a solid silver mirror in the background, you only see little edges of it and it looks amazing. So all we're going to do now is embellish the heart. I'm using these tiny little paper flowers and leaves. I made these myself. I cut them out on my scan and cut. To show you how to make them would have made this video way too long. So just glue them all over the left side of your heart or wherever you want to place them. Glue down a larger flower for the focal point or a bow. To make your vellum piece for the background, just cut it out in a rectangle, then on an angle, and then tear across the top. On the angle piece, you can use a, a punch to do a, a pretty edge, or you can cut it in a straight line, or you can glue a piece of lace on it. The next step is to get some extra flowers and glue them onto your vellum background. This will unite the heart shape with the background and 
it looks so much better when you do this. What I also done on my scanner cut is cut out a bunch of leaves. They are tiny little things, but I just put a bit of glue on the tip of them and push them under the little flowers. I don't use them on every single flower. It just looked nice with a few here and there. I made two. I made the one on the left with a flower at the top and the bottom and the one on the right with a bow because I wasn't sure which one I would prefer when I finished my journal. So all you gotta do to glue it in is glue it down the left hand side and across the bottom and that will be your corner tuck. And this is what it looks like finished. It's not the biggest tuck spot, but there's plenty of stuff that you can put in here. This next one is a heart pocket. You can use this as a pocket and a tuck spot. I found this in Mum's stash and she'd made all these little paper flowers and glued them on the front and made a flip out on the back like for journaling in or for writing a little message in. So I've glued mine down in the corner so it's a pocket at the front and a tuck spot at the back. I made mine using a wedding themed 12 by 12 cardstock. It's double sided and I've got the template for you here. The template makes it a lot easier. You just got to work out where you want to see your patterns on the heart. I turned mine over to this side so that when I fold my little flaps over to form my pocket, I've got a little bit of lace on the left and on the right because the other side is gonna be the background of my pocket. So I just score a line across the bottoms. Where you got a score is marked on your pattern. So I just do a light score and fold these pieces over. And this is how easy it is to make this heart into a little pocket. So now you can see why you needed a double-sided paper. So just put a little bit of glue where the two flaps over they cross over and be careful not to glue your pocket closed put a scrap piece of paper in there until it dries so aren't they so pretty and it really goes well with the whole bridal journal you can place it straight like this or turn it on its side in the corner and make it into a pocket and a tuck spot i just glue two sides down to use it as a tuck spot. You don't need to overuse your glue if you're using this Barely Art glue, it sticks so well. And because it's a folded pocket, I'm just clamping it down a little bit to make sure it dries in place. Now that it's dry, I just put this little embellishment in the pocket, but the, the thing is, it's just there to show the bride, she can take that out and put something of her own in there. This next one is one of my favourites. It's the sewing tissue paper heart pattern flip out. Remember the pattern packet that I used to make a page? Well, inside this was all the pattern pieces to make a purse and a little heart cushion. So I just cut out the heart and I've done it like this. Just pretend this is the heart. Just cut a little bit wider than the black line, but do it in double layers. So you can see the bottom layer through the top layer. To put the two together, I didn't use glue. I just done a straight stitch around on the black line where you would have been sewing if you were making it out of fabric. I put a crease down the center of the heart and glued this side of it fully onto the page. You can't lift it at all. Then, because I'd already pre-creased it, I just folded it over onto the opposite page. You could do it from left to right or right to left. I'm even going to use this piece here that was the instructions on how to make the little heart and purse and I made an envelope out of it. So I've just tore the flap off the top of the envelope and I just use a paper clip and put it on the page next to the purse image itself and it can be used as a pocket. You're gonna love this one. 
you can make your own lace sample tags. I put the link to the printable in the description box below for you. I've made some with a print on them and some I've left bare so you can do your own. This is a quill paper 80 GSM in the colour natural and the print looks amazing on it. But you can print on white paper, it looks just as good. They're easy to make, just print them out and cut them out on the line and then fold them in half, corner to corner. And then just crease it with your fingers. You can use a bone folder if you like that sharp crease. Then open it back up and just cut the corner off on the front only. And cutting the corners off on the front, they look authentic. You can use them a couple of ways. You can get an old fashioned pin and just pin it onto a strip of old lace. Or you can make a little topper like the blue one you see in the background here. And I'll show you how to make this little cherub topper in a minute. I'll just cut this piece of lace off and show you what it looks like both over the top of the topper and if you didn't put the little tag on it, just inside of the topper. But I'm going to staple this time instead of using a pin and then I'm going to put some glue on the back of the lace and glue it over the top of the topper and I'll show you why. Here's one I made earlier. It's so easy to put a paper clip on it and take it off your page. So I don't glue my topper closed and this is so the bride can take it off altogether if she's not into vintage or she can change the lace out for a piece of lace that was on her own wedding gown. Now here's some ideas on how to use the blank labels. You can hand write on them or if you've got some tiny rubber stamps just ink some numbers on there. You've got to remember this is all in fun. Put a couple of numbers on that might relate to the bride. They look so good. Stapled, glued, stamped, whatever you like, you use that method. Now look at this one here. Oh, I love this one. I made it as wide as the page and I put three pieces of vintage lace on there. They're all Victorian lace from 1920s and I seriously, this one turned out amazing. Just using a wider topper and a little skeleton clamp to hold it on the top of the page. You can even use them to label the lace that you've got in your stash. Now here's how I made the little blue topper. I've used a glamorous shiny light blue cardstock. Cut it out to the width that you want it and then score it down the middle and fold it in half. Once you figure out how wide you want it, just cut it off, whether you want to make a narrow one or a wide one. Then what I've used are these rub-ons. These rub-ons are so pretty. This one is the little cherub, and I have a couple of sheets of these, so I made more than one. So you just put it in the corner of your topper and rub it on. That's it you've made yourself a little topper. Add whatever the lace you want to it. This is definitely a great custom idea. This one, I changed my mind three times. It's the top of the envelope pattern and I, you could use it as an edge of a page. You could just fold it over both sides of your page and then glue it down flat. And then it would just be a decorative page edge. Right, but then I thought I'll make it a flip out. So the other side has this flap off the envelope. I could glue a piece of paper to the flap. And then I thought, hang on, I might make it into a pocket. Because it's still got the back piece of the flap, I just grabbed another piece of instruction sheet paper and I'm just going to glue that down 
so that I can use it for a pocket. I'll glue this piece down first so it doesn't come off the edge of the page. And then, because I've got the pocket folded over that little piece like a belly band at the back, I'm just going to put glue along the sides and the bottom of my pocket. And it's now a little pocket. Always let your glue dry before you try and put stuff in your pocket. And of course, if I put a thumbnail in it, it's going to look like a pocket. I don't like seeing the barcodes, so I always cover them over. So I'm just going to add another one of these bridal lace paper embellishments over the top. And this one here on the front side, I'm going to use this pale blue paper with butterflies on it. And I'm going to make it into a little corner tuck spot that can be used for journaling on the inside. So just cut out a square. I'm going to turn it over and just fold it corner to corner to make a triangle. Just put a finger crease in it. All I've got to do is glue it down on two sides so that it sits in the corner and the folded over piece can still flip up. The barcode's now gone and there's this little flip up for the bride to find when she's going through the journal. Well, it wouldn't be a bridal journal if we didn't glue lacy pieces to the edge of the pages. This is a decorative embroidery piece that I got on Marketplace Facebook. It's perfect to add to this journal. So I'm only gluing it down on one side so the leaves and the flower hangs over the edge. And this sits beautiful with this page here that we've made the flip out pocket. I'm going to glue this piece of bridal lace to the edge of a page. Go through your pages and, and do a bit of a plan. I'm going to put it on this coffee dyed paper because it just shows up more. Then I'll do a test fit to see how much of the lace I want peeking out the edge here. So once I've figured that out, I hold it in place with my scissors and then glue the top bit down, then flip it up and glue the bottom bit down. This way it stays in the right place. I'm going to chop off the top and the bottom because I just want a tiny little bit peeking out the bottom here. The next piece I'm going to put on this page. This is towards sort of the middle-ish to the front of the book. So now I'm going to add this piece to the back of the book. This really suits the journal. I've added four pieces now, so I need one more toward the front. Instead of using lace like lengths, I'm going to use this gorgeous little embroidered triangle. I don't know what they ever would have been used for. Maybe embellishments on clothes. I thought I'm going to make it into a belly band. So I just run a bead of glue down the edge of my page. So I'm going to place this on the edge, but I'm going to move it out to the right a little bit. So some of these flowers will peek out when I'm looking at the pages when the journal's closed. To turn it into a belly band, I'm just going to put a bit of glue on the tip here. So I turn it over, so I'm gluing the wrong side and then press it down with my bone folder so I don't push the glue through the lace. Now I've got both a page edge and a belly band. I love it. It looks beautiful on this silver rose designer paper. It's not the biggest of pockets, but you could definitely slip something precious in here. The way this is looking right now proves you do not have to make a big, chunky, hard cover for a bridal journal. A bride would love to receive something as beautiful as this. Now, I'm torn. I want to go ahead and complete the cover, but... I keep changing my mind on where to put things. So I might end up doing a poll so you guys can help me 
which one you think looks best on the front of this journal. The great thing about making journals, whether it's the pages or the cover, you don't have to finish them immediately unless you're on a deadline. I don't have a deadline, so I can make this whenever I'm ready. I'm going to come back to this cover later on and finish it when I get the right feel for it. So for now, I'm just going to do a flip through and show you all the pages that I have completed. I don't think about you anymore Except perhaps when wedding bells ring I don't think about you anymore Except when I hear songs that you sing I don't remember how you used to play With your hair to make my soul
about